Okay, there you go. That should make it work. Yes, it is, because I can see... Yeah, I can see the microphone auxiliary going off. Okay, so now we're live at the Railway Museum of Eastern Ontario. I'm, of course, your host, Sam Rawlings, and this is Afternoons at the Station. Uh, now, today, we're actually going to be looking at our dining car. Our dining car is from 1899. Uh, it's actually made by Wagner Dining Car, and it was an ex-Canadian National Railway uh, with the number 4006. We had originally got it from the Science and Tech Museum in Ottawa. Uh, so, of course, if you're not from Ottawa, you, there's this museum in Ottawa, Science and Tech, of course. And they had they were doing this clean out, this renovation. And excuse me, they had this dining car, and they called us. They said, "Would you guys like it?" We said, "Absolutely, of course." So we so essentially they donated it to us, but the only condition on that was that we had to bring it. We had to get it to our museum first off. Uh, so what we ended up doing is we got this massive truck. And when I say truck, by the way, I mean like an actual, uh, a large, well, a, a truck, like a flatbed truck. I think I have pictures of it here. Let me pull it up. So what we did is, if you can see, yep, here they are. Is it not? Oh, okay. Now you should be able to see it. Uh, so this is, we got them in November. Uh, we ended up getting two large flatbeds. So the whole thing on its own is 70 tons. See the top part of it, the yellow part, uh, is 40 tons and each of the wheels are, are 15 tons each and, and there's two sets. Uh, this is it in our restoration shed. You can see it has that bright yellow color. Uh, that was because it was made by Intercolonial Railway and they had this amazing, uh, this amazing bright yellow color. Here's the inside of it. Now this is when we first got it in November, so I'll show you some pictures later actually of how we have it now and how we have fixed it up. Uh, but this is the beautiful, you can see the nice ceiling that you have here. Uh, down as well, you can see it. it's our very interesting, well, it's not necessarily interesting, but uh, we have uh, on the left here, where the, you can't see my mouse apparently, uh, is John Weir, who's actually someone that we're, we're going to have on the program pretty soon. Uh, we're hoping to do it either next week or the week after. We're just kind of finalizing that with him. Uh, and then there's me, of course, as well. Uh, here are some of the men that we used uh, in order to get it from one place to the other. You see here we have the this, uh, the I guess the front loader, or not front loader. So what they did is we used this to lift up the yellow, the main part of it. And then they were put on the wheels that had been transported already. Why is it not? It's not letting me go forward. There you go. Okay, and there's the inside of it. That's the kitchen. Uh, and I'll show you that more once we have it fixed up the inside how we got it as you can see it's actually in pretty good condition especially compared to some of the other cars that we've gotten over the years we just had to do some minor repairs and, and a lot of cleaning Is there, oh. that of course was the cell phone i don't know where that third cell phone is coming from though and i thought i had unplugged all of them but apparently I did not okay so we're gonna try to keep doing that we'll have to ignore that I don't know who called uh, Jeffrey 
We'll have to ch I'll have to check that out afterwards. There's a little behind the scenes. So those are the beautiful curtains, curtains that we have, and they're actually velvet curtains. You can see them there, and they have these nice little tassels on them. Uh, those were actually very interesting to clean. We had uh, we actually brought someone in named Don Quinn, uh, as well as Tamara Taylor, and they they had they had cleaned them. Uh, this here is the the chandeliers. Uh, you can actually see them. They're oil. They have the wick. They're the candles there. Uh, well, originally that is. Uh, at this point, they had been retrofitted, and you can see the light bulbs where those could go in. ringing again not letting me okay that's not what we wanted either Let's just go back to our our main picture for now. So we got these, like I said, back in November. Well, we had made the deal about in July, so actually a bit earlier than July, and we were originally going to get it in August. We we're going to bring it here. We ran into some complications because because of the size of it, it's seventy tons. So for when we had had to transport it in two parts, we had two flatbeds: one for the one for the wheels and one in the truck or the truck. Sorry. Uh, and one for the main body. Uh, now, the other thing was because of its size and because of its weight, we could actually only go on certain roads, and they couldn't be too twisty or windy, uh, and we couldn't go under bridges either. We also had to coordinate it with the OPP, uh, as well as the different uh, the different jurisdictions that we went through. So in our case, we were actually pretty lucky. It was just Ottawa and Smith Falls. And we had to coordinate with their police uh, just just kind of make a nice smooth transition uh, between one place and the other. So to give a little background on these dining cars, uh, I told you a little bit about ours. 18, it was 1899. It was built by Wagner uh, Car Company. You can actually see a nice, a very interesting picture. While they were still Wagner Car Company, because they had been bought out later and became a different company. And you can see the Wagner Palace Car Company for Intercolonial Railway, 1899. So this actually makes it the second oldest car in our collection, uh, which is saying something because we have some pretty old cars. And here's a photo of it actually in use. That second car is the one right behind, right? So not the one behind the steam engine, but the one after that. Uh, in this, we don't know exactly when this was taken, but it was a promotional photo. Um, a long time ago. Oops, so to keep going on the background of not just this car, but the dining cars in general. So essentially what they were is they're these full sit-down restaurants. Uh, in our case, we have a full kitchen in our car. Uh, and then it was used as a, at the, we had a server that would go back and forth. Uh, so these were, they weren't necessarily common for a long time. And then, well, in 1899, of course, but it was when this first started. And pretty a big one was in 1870 for when the Central Pacific Railroad, not the Canadian Pacific, the Central Pacific Railroad, started doing their first one it, and it stops from it doesn't stop for meals because a lot of time what would happen is one of the there'd be roadhouses outside of the station and when you were going through the the town that you were that you were doing or not going through so when you were on the train you'd go through a town and when you would stop at a station at the water stops where they would put water into the boiler you'd be able to get off and uh and, and visit one of the local roadhouses to, to eat. Uh, afterwards, and the Central Pacific Railway actually started, put this nose to passengers, it does not stop for meal. And they started serving fare. Now originally it was pretty bad meat uh, and some cold beans and old coffee. Uh, of course these poor conditions, uh, a lot of people were discouraged they didn't do this. But 
by the mid 1880s, most railroads started offering meal service. So, and there was these first dedicated dining car. Uh, the, the, so, and, and of course it started off with that Central Pacific Railroad as well as the first con transcontinental railroad. And then there's this big competition among railroads uh, and it was taken to this new level of serving. There would be menus and you'd go to the server and they'd come and they'd bring it to you. Uh, you can see, and then later in 1951, there was something called the Pleasure Dome Lounge Cars, uh, and those were used by the Santa Fe, uh, Santa Fe Railway, and they ended up being very similar dining cars, except a lot nicer, and you can actually see something similar. If you've ever heard of the, the Canadian Pacific Mountaineer, uh, it's very similar to that, these lounge cars, these Pleasure Dome So there were many, many foods that were served. Like I said, originally it was not the greatest meat and beans and, and cold and coffee. Uh, but as things became more, became more standard, not standardized, sorry, became more, you know, more fancy and more expensive, they ended up using fresh ingredients wherever they could. And we'll, I'll actually show you the inside of the kitchen once we're done as well as some preparing things. But they ended up having some pretty good food. You know, they had things like duck. They had like beef goulash, potato dumplings. Uh, some places even had lobster, curry of lamb, scallop Brussels sprouts, and of course pie and uh, ice cream. Uh, coffee was a big thing as well, and you could actually get it either iced or hot. And same with tea, which it wasn't necessarily a very common thing back then, but you could get them on railways. Now, can you still get them today is the important question. Well, yes, of course, there is still things like the Mountaineer. But there's also uh, Via Rail Canada. Via Rail Canada, for those who don't know, it's pretty much the exclusive passenger train service in Canada. Uh, and they've actually been very good to us in the past as well. They've donated uh, services to us at the Railway Museum here. Uh, and it, when we had our train fest, uh, which we had a little preview of last week uh, we ended up actually having they rented out well not rented out they donated this little mini train for us uh, but they still do have their dining car service they have 13 of them uh, and those are unit numbers 8401 to 8418 and they have 48 seats and a kitchen except for a couple of them where they only have 44 seats uh, now they are only used on the transcontinental train, so the Canadian, the Ocean, the Montreal Gas Bay, and the Winnipeg Churchill. But if you have a big enough group, you can actually add them onto another train by special request. So what did we just actually opened ours up for the first time, and we had a little luncheon. Luncheon, we had it open to well, first off our volunteers. Uh, and our staff, and then also to the media of our town. So we had, for instance, Kathy Botham, who, who runs TV, and where we got a number of pictures from, actually. It's actually, all the pictures that I'm about to show you today, they're almost entirely from her. Uh, and then we also had some town councillors, Doreen Allen, our tourism coordinator, Becky Allen, uh, and a number of different people uh, in, the, in the town. So... Here's what it looks like on the outside. You can see it has that bright yellow color. On the left there is, that's John Mulkerns. Uh, he's someone else that we're looking to have on the show fairly soon. Uh, and he was acting as the conductor for that ride. To get things started though, we of course got Anthony Humphrey. Uh, and he was the engineer. He was the one running the diesel engine. Uh, and we had to get a couple things out of the way first. So first off, we had to move the cabooses. So the cabooses were actually in the way of where we were going to put the dining car. We were going to put it right out front, right behind our 1112 steam engine. Uh, of course, we had to we had to move the cabooses to get it there. So we started off the day like that. You can see John Weir on the left corner there, and he's kind of directing things. And he was also operating the switch. Uh, so from here, after we got those uh, moved out of the way, we then proceeded to couple up the cars. 
this was you see John Weir here again he's motioning to Tony to move backwards a little bit uh, and you can see the cars are coupling together this is what it looks like once they are you can see they have two hooks well sort of hooks and they come together and just grab on pretty pretty easily uh, and then they're tightened and they're secured like that And here's John Mulkerns again. We know, you notice we're all wearing masks. We're very, we're very conscious about that, uh, and we're letting people board the train. This is one of our staff, and actually, she did a lot of serving and preparing as well, and cleaning the grounds. And uh, this is Emily, Emily Parker, uh, and she is one of our hostesses uh, for that day. Here is, of course, another shot about when people are about to board. And we made sure that there was a nice lunch for everyone. So we set up the tables to look very similar to this. And once again, I want to thank Kathy Botham for all these photos. And they had set up in a fancy, in, in the proper way of saying it. Now, this particular, we actually have CN cup, cups and cutlery. Uh, here at the museum, someone actually donated a while ago. I'm not sure exactly when it was before when I started working here. Uh, and they donated a number of cutlery uh, and dining equipment. So we had actually set those out on the rail, on, on the car. Now here's another good look at it here, uh, although this has some people in it. Now when it came to food, we actually, uh, here's a good, we had this sandwich presentation, sandwich and some charcuterie, I think is the term for it. Uh, and those were from Two Guys for Lunch, actually, in Smith's Falls here. Uh, good good lunch I'm assuming I didn't actually I didn't eat it but it was uh, they had some good stuff they of course had I believe they were cucumber salads this egg salad guacamole some liverwurst salad and, you know if that's your thing uh, and then we also provided them with some crackers and some cheese uh, and desserts and now of course we couldn't go without coffee so here and this is me by the way uh, it was providing, we made some coffee and we made some Earl Grey tea, uh, which we then brought out to the passengers. Now, apart from those to drink, we also actually had water and sweet tea. Uh, so sweet tea is, well, southern sweet tea. Uh, it's just, it's pretty simple. It's just tea that's then uh, chilled. Uh, and then you add simple syrup to it, which is equal parts sugar and equal parts water. In this case, we had lemon, which ended up being good. And it was, it was a pretty good hit. If I do say so myself. Here is Catherine actually pouring the coffee. Uh, this is once again another one of our summer students, uh, Catherine. And she is pouring the coffee for, this is Lorraine Allen. She's both a member of our board and she's also one of the town councillors in Smith's Falls. This is the inside of the where the kitchen is. Here we have Catherine and Emily. They're in the background. Uh, they're just getting ready to carry some stuff out. Uh, and then there's Lisa. I believe she's cutting up some of the vegetables for the for, for the for the platter there that we had. I don't know what she's cutting up. I think I know she's got some grapes there. I don't think she, she, we didn't cut the grapes. Everyone there was over the age of five. And there's Emily getting some more stuff ready. Uh, she's cutting the, I believe those are cucumbers, getting those ready in that in that uh, pot is where we kept our tea. And then we used a scooper, I don't know what it's called. It's like a bowl and a, well it's not a bowl, but it's like a little bowl, it's not a spatula, but it's, you know, it's a similar thing. And we brought those out. Here is a picture of Catherine actually bringing out some of the food. So if you notice there, how we had it set up is we had these sandwiches on the biggest ring at the bottom and above that we had different fruits and some vegetables we actually had I believe pickles uh, I know we had grapes and strawberries and then at the very top we had uh, different desserts there's these cake pops I believe Nanaimo bars uh, we still have some downstairs I could probably go check it out after this is over and then I'll, I'll tell you about what we had on Thursday And this is another picture of how we had it set up.
Oh, and here's actually a better picture of the, of, the, of the sandwiches that we had. Although I just realized I already showed that picture. So you get double time. Now, the other thing that you'll be able to see, which is going to be very interesting that you'll like, is John Weir. Uh, I mentioned him uh, a couple minutes ago. And he actually was just... Uh, it was his birthday. It was his 80th birthday. So we got this nice little cake for him. It was, it was very exciting. It was nice. He's been here for a long time. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I'd like to, I'd like to do an interview with him. Uh, but course you know if we can uh, we really are we do really want to I mean he's a wonderful fella and he's been here actually since the beginning uh, and it's just it's been a real pleasure I've been working with him for a while and he's, it's just probably one of the greatest men I actually know I'm trying to find, I can't find the video of that we had of him But nonetheless, we had this nice little surprise party for him. And this was during our, our staff portion of it, staff and volunteers. We had split it up. The first part was where we, the first run was at 12 o'clock. And that's where we had sort of our media people and politicians. And the second run was the run that we did here with John. And it was the, the volunteers and staff and, and board members. And that was a very interesting one because we actually ended up getting talk about different stories with the with the volunteers actually it's a really great story that i heard from tony humphrey he's one of our he's this fellow the one who was up in the train in not the train sorry the engine and uh, he told me the story about kenya in the 19 1980s what happened with this one it was actually very interesting so essentially they got when they first got their independence they started to build this railway Right, and they actually had the help of the Canadian government and some different foreign governments to, to do this. On their very first run, they, for one, they weren't going too fast. They were going only about 10 miles an hour. And they were going from a station out in the country to the, to the main city. <laughs> and all of a sudden, about 10 minutes into the ride, or I shouldn't say ride, 10 minutes into the journey, all of a sudden they just abruptly stopped. And it, since it was their opening journey, it was had all these fancy dignitaries and politicians on it. And it just stopped, and they were, of course, like, what's going on? So they get out of the car, and what do they see? You see the engineers and the conductor, and they were just sitting on the side of the railway. They go, they're like, hey, what's going on here? Why did you guys stop? He goes, oh, it's lunchtime. <laughs> they're always time for lunch in Kenya. That's just one of the stories, though. I probably didn't tell it right. Once Tony gets on, I'll, I'll get him to tell you the story, because it's a lot better than I am, because I, of course... Well, I was actually in the middle of serving, so I didn't get the, the full story behind it. I'm sure there is more, though. Uh, and here's our here's part of our crew that ran it that day. So up here we have the different people. Uh, we'll go from left to left to right. So there we have uh, his name is Brian Reed. He's one of our volunteers here. He was actually a former school teacher. Uh, in fact, my former school teacher is my grade two teacher, uh, and he's oh, he's always had this love for trains. Uh, so he's come in and he's volunteered for many things. Uh, he's done a lot of painting here. He's done maintenance work, uh, and then of course when we do rides like these, he's always great with with people, uh, and also for for helping out in the in the inside of the train. Right above him, that's again Anthony Humphrey, our president and our chief engineer. Uh, he was the one who was driving the engine. Uh, beside him is, uh, I believe that's Bill. I can't, it's hard to tell with the glasses on and the sunglasses. Actually, I should have asked beforehand. That's Bill, and he works here uh, from time to time, and he actually does a lot of maintenance on our steam engine, just keeping it, be able to move it, so keeping the things, the, the wheels greased and the bolts tightened. Beside that is John Mulkerns. He was actually a former correctional officer uh, at the Kingston Penitentiary. Uh, and he's, once again, someone else that we'd very much like to get on. And he's been here for, for a long time. Uh, and he actually, he, he does the engineer here, does the piloting of the engine as well. Um, if Tony's not available, or he'll just help Tony with it. 
uh, and he was acting as one of our conductors. Beside that is John Weir. He's the one who just turned 80. Uh, he's, he's lived a very good life, and we're excited to have him here, and we'll, we're excited to have him on. Right beside him in the straw hat is Gilbert Lacroix. Uh, he's someone else that we'd very much like to have on soon, uh, and he's most notable for both the maintenance around the yard, and he's also in charge of the 5802 project. The 5802 project is we had this old passenger car, car 5802, and on the inside we are making a scale model of the town as it was in 1955. So we were able to get some survey maps from Canadian National, and we've been constructing things scale model. I believe it's an HO scale, uh, and it's going to be of the Canadian National Line of how it, how it was back then. Uh, underneath him there is Graham Roy. He is another one of our volunteers who's been here for a very long time. And he's done, well, he's done many things. Here, his father was actually a telegraph operator, and then he became a telegraph operator as well. Of course, when that died down and wasn't used anymore, he then went on to become a teacher. He taught grade 7 and grade 8, uh, and he was, uh, he, he was fairly well known in his community as well. And of course, we'll go back to our kitchen and we'll show you the staff that was working that day. Here at Front and Center, that's Lisa Bell. She's our curator. Uh, and then, of course, she's also not afraid to, you know, to get her hands dirty with us, uh, with us regular people. Behind that, in the blonde that we'll see here, that's Catherine. That's another one of our summer students. Uh, actually, unfortunately, it was her last day just a couple of days ago because uh, she is going back to school in St. FX for English literature. Here's our third staff member, Emily Parker. Uh, she actually just graduated school. Uh, she went for museum administration uh, and was also for cultural studies beforehand uh, at university and then to Humber College at museum administration. And she's been doing a lot of work around here lately when it comes to exhibitions. So we've got this new exhibit actually all about our volunteers uh, and then also she's done some a lot of work with categorizing things because we have a lot of artifacts here that need to be uh, need to be updated and put in a log and she's been doing a lot of that lately uh, and then of course there's me uh, and I'm there do it while doing things like this and then also doing some event planning so when we do our movies under the stars uh, it's usually me coordinating with uh, with Heritage House, uh, as well as coordinating with uh, different media places. This is uh, outside of the dining car again. We'll just show you again, because it's a beautiful car. Uh, 70 tons, so it's not exactly a, a light thing. Um, but it's beautiful, and we're so grateful that we were able to get it. Because it's really something that's, that, you know, it's not you don't see anymore. Like I said, Via Rail, they have a couple of them, but it's not something that you can actually enjoy on. Now our plans for this is, we've actually had had to change our plans a lot. See, when we first got this in November, excuse me, we had to change things up a lot. See, we got this in November, and it was our plan actually to open it up and have the walkthroughs and even offer dinner and, and lunches and maybe even a cafe in there. Now, of course, with COVID, we've had to scale back considerably and we weren't able to get people inside of it because we've had to close off our cars for for walking through them. And you still take a look on the outside and you can actually see through the window, but you can't walk through it. And so what we ended up doing is, well, sort of a mixed bag, actually. So though we weren't able to take people through it, we were able to do a lot more repairs than we would be able to if it was out in the open for tours. So you can see that we have a nice coat of paint on there. Uh, we fixed the roof quite a bit more and we were able to get a much more thorough clean. Now, like I said, our plans for it originally were to do this like fine dining experience. Uh, and we really wanted to start that in the, this spring. Now, unfortunately with COVID, we've had to delay that. That's still our plans for it is we'd like to bring in chefs that can cook. Uh, well, I guess all chefs can cook. Chefs that can cook well. 
uh, and they offer this this dining experience inside of the car and then also we'd like to rent it out I know we've actually talked to a number of different number of different businesses actually in Smith Falls itself and they want to rent it out for their corporate meetings and that's something that we'd really like to do as well uh, just to show it off more and to, well, to just have people see it I mean that's a big thing this is something that you don't see anymore so we are hoping to do it for corporate events, you know, board meetings, whatever. We'd also like to try and get it out for weddings. You know, if you have a small wedding, then we're absolutely, we'll take you in it. We could even cater for you or you can get someone else to cater. Uh, and it, like I said, it's 636 people, so it's, it's a good size. And then, of course, also things like date nights, if you want to rent it out. Now, we don't have it available to rent right now. We've had a number of people actually email and message us, and we do want to rent it out soon. So if you stay tuned to our Facebook, you have it on screen here, Armio Smith Falls. We're actually going to keep people updated. We're trying to do updates, trying to at least once a week about it, and how we can open it up to, to serve you. So enough about that. I'm actually going to show you a little preview of what's happening Thursday. Well, it's, it's, I shouldn't say what's happening because it's not, uh, it's, we're not having the event, but we're gonna be showing you, I'm just gonna show you some some highlights from actually our very first train fest. On Thursday, last Thursday that is, I showed you our train fest. Tw uh, tw 2016 and I believe 20, 20 yeah, 2016 and 2017. And then Train Fest 2018 is available on our Patreon. Uh, and then I'll actually show you, today I'll show you a sneak preview of our 2010 Rail Fest. So if you just want to stay tuned, and we'll put that up now.
So that was just a little sneak preview. We're going to show you the full thing. It's about 22 minutes long. And that'll be on Thursday. Now, also on Thursday, actually, is our Movies Under the Stars. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, on Thursday nights, the Smith Falls Railway Museum of Eastern Ontario, as well as the Smith Falls Heritage House, we actually run a program in what's called Centennial Park. In Centennial Park, it's right underneath the water tower, we play a movie uh, every Thursday night. Now, in past years, it's been every Thursday night in the summer, but with COVID, it's actually only been every Thursday night in August. Uh, so please come out to that if you live in the Smith Falls area. Uh, and also, please donate to us. Like, I'm not going to lie, we're, we're struggling this year. Because we've been capped at only 100 people come, uh, we haven't been able to sell as many concessions. And the concessions are essentially what keep us running. So if you do go, please consider buying at our concessions. Uh, and if you don't go, well then, you know, if you can still donate to us, you can donate to us online. Of course, at patreon.com, or if you go to our website, there's there's a donation button through PayPal. And not to beg for money, but we're begging for money because it's it's pretty important, and it's important to us, and it's important to the town. You know, we love doing it, and and the town loves having it. So this weekend, this week is Miss Doubtfire. Uh, so that's August 20th, uh, 2020. Just come and see it. Also, that's my parents' anniversary. So, you know, doubly see it. And we really hope to see you see you there. Now, before we go, we'd also like to send a special message. Uh, it was really, it was really sad. It was really sad. August thirteenth, age eighty-seven, the former CPR conductor and uh, local chairman Glenn Blair, uh, he unfortunately passed away. So we're offering our condolences to his family uh, and the army. We we have we're sad as well. Uh, his obituary is that Blair and Son Funeral Directors of Smith Falls. Uh, you can check that out if you'd like. And of course, we are uh, we're very saddened to hear of his passing. So that'll be all for today. We're going to bring this train into the station. And you know, like I said, check us out at rmeo.sf on Instagram, rmeo.org. Uh, for our online store, uh, it's currently it's pickup only. Uh, but if an order is large enough, then we'll certainly then we'll certainly make arrangements to ship it out to you. Uh, and that's our online store, rmeo.square.site, and our Facebook, RMEO Smith Falls. It's pretty much almost every day we post on our Facebook, uh, and it's usually pictures from around the museum uh, or from uh, from times past. Uh, on Mondays we do Merch Monday, on Thursdays a Throwback Thursday, so you'll get to you'll get to see that. Uh, and of course, it's just something that you can use to stay up to date with what's happening at the museum. So that's all for today. I will see you Thursday, uh, and have a wonderful day.